Yeah. Yeah. And it's true. Tonight in Project Energy, a Minnesota inventor says he'll never need to buy gasoline again. It's that simple. Meet the man about to change everything about the way we drive. This is a magnetic transmission that's, a, that's the heart of the whole thing. A magnetic transmission running on a 100 horsepower DC motor. Instead of having a gas cap in here, we'd have a plug in here so that you just plug in here for your battery charger. It's not the first time inventor Bob Albertson has tried to promote the idea of an electric car. We tried it back in 1970, but there was not a market for it then like if there is right now. That's why we got went back into it here two years ago. It was two years ago the United Auto Workers asked Bob to convert a Ford Ranger pickup. They wanted to convince Ford to keep the St. Paul plant and start making 100% electric vehicles. And out of Bob's garage comes a truck that can reach speeds of 80 miles per hour and travel 100 miles on a battery charge. With the transmission here, we have five speeds forward, so I can actually put it in low gear where you'd have the same amount of pulling power that you would if this had a gas engine in it. But the all-electric Ford Ranger is more than just good for the environment. In addition to ending our addiction on foreign oil, it's basically maintenance-free. Look under the hood at a regular Ranger. Bob eliminates 29 parts. By going total electric, you eliminated all of this. Basically, you'll have a maintenance-free car because you don't have to change oil. You don't have to do tune-ups. There's no air filters, air cleaners, anything like that that needs to be changed. And there's more. Bob has a plan to recharge the batteries while driving. He'll convert the power created by bumps on the road using what he calls a vibrant generator. We feel we can get another 70% longer mileage like out of those batteries because what we're generating back to the batteries from the bump of the road, the bumper of the road, the more power we're going to bring back to those batteries. Bob believes now is the time for his all-electric car. He's watched his other inventions start small and go big. I'm just proud of the uh, str uh, trimmer, string trimmer. There's the weed whacker. <laughs> the automatic drip coffee maker, and the pulsating shower massager. Bob has more than 200 patents to his name. I've licensed or sold out 47 products to companies, and every one of these products is still on the market. I have never licensed or sold out a product that is not still on the market. Except some of the products are bigger hits than others, but I've never come up with a bad one. The Ranger is powered by electric trolling motor batteries, the kind you find on a boat. What does Bob know about such things? Well, he invented the electric trolling motor. Living on Lake Minnetonka, I said, why can't we have an electric motor? Why do I have to have a gas? So that's when I came up with the electric trolling motor. <laughs> and you know those socket wrenches that the astronauts use to fix the Hubble telescope on their spacewalks? Yeah, Bob invented those too. <laughs> Weed eater. That was 1960, but Bob, who's 65 now, actually began 
think he get big in the invention business when he was a teenager. In 1955, he designed this contraption. It became something you see in most cars today. The cassette tape player. I was uh, 18 years old. And I got $10,000 for it. <laughs> Which in those days was good money. Bob Elbertson sits down at the drawing board. There's no telling what he might come up with. Like this all-terrain vehicle he designed after seeing how rescuers failed to save someone who fell through the ice. He goes on land, ice, and water. Bob, you look at all these things that you've invented, and I, I have to ask you, have you ever had a real job? Well, sort of a real job, but I, my real job has been inventing and selling products off to companies. He also yeah. spent a little time breaking up one big company. Frustrated while owning a payphone business on the side, he made headlines in 1984 as the inventor who took on Bell and won. His lawsuit led to the breakup of a monopoly known as AT&T. So how many things have you invented? Uh, I've, had, uh, I've got over 200 patents to my name. 200? Yeah. Come on over here and I'll show you some others. Bob's zero clear socket wrench works in very tight places. An item that took off when he sold it to NASA. Now it's also being used by the U.S. military. And Bob's latest idea is that old pulsating shower head beefed up for a new use. The pulsating pressure washer. In the coming days, we'll be seeing another of Bob's inventions. What started out in 1966 as a bunch of metal and wires hooked up to an old car starter has become a voting staple, the electric trolling motor. Over 200 patents that have earned Bob hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it could have been even more. If I had retained the patent on the weed whacker, I'd made millions. If I retained the patent on the on the Paul City Charm massage, I would have made things there. So is there anything that you wish you could invent, some idea that you'd, you'd like to come up with and you can't? Well, I have another one right now, but I just can't talk about it right now. Can't talk about it. <laughs> Tonight, you might not know his name, but you'll be surprised at how he's played a big part in all our lives. Excellent. With that, let's give a... I think uh, those two uh, uh, videos kind of gave a pretty uh, good uh, uh, idea of some of the things I've done. Uh, <clears throat> I started inventing when I was 15 years old, that's what I did, Mr. Coffee. And I'm going to give you a little experience to what happened. Um, in my confirmation class, I went to Mount Oliver Church, 50th and James, and the minister there was Dr. Youngdahl. And he was my confirmation teacher. And one day at confirmation, I asked, I said, Can I come in and talk to you, Reverend Youngdahl? He said, Sure. I said, why is everything you do around here just explode? I mean, the, our, when my parents first joined that church, there were 150 people. Back then, when it was confirmation class, we're up to about 8,000. Today, it's over 13,000. I says, why does everything work so good? Everything just, you know, everything you do just explodes. He says, Bob, I go upstairs for the answers. I says, for me to go upstairs. He says, I go upstairs to God. So he taught me, or coached me, as far as how to go upstairs and get your ideas. And the thing is, is that you've got to realize we're one of many planets. We're not the only one in the universe. And what I do is go upstairs at night in a dream. I program myself ahead of time, and about 3 o'clock every morning I wake up after having a dream, whatever I ask for, and I go to my little desk and I work it out, make copies and things like that, and go to go back to bed maybe at four or five in the morning, get up at eight. But the thing is is that I learned this how to how to bring in these ideas and go upstairs for the answers. And that's how I did these products. People look at me and says, Well, how in the world did you design and make and invent a coffee maker at fifteen years old? How did you go and do a water pick shower massage when you're 16 years old? How did you do an eight-track tape player when you're, for Bill Lear, 
when you're when you're 18 years old. You know, I says, well, you, you never went. You, you never went. I, I went to school. I went to graduate from high school from St. Louis Park, but I never went to college. Well, how did you do all this? Well, this is what I try to explain to things that to my people that this is what I do. And just to back up a little bit, because of my inventions and what have you, Bill McKnight, CEO of 3M, heard about me, invited me over, and he says, Bob, how would you like to be a problem solver for 3M? And he says, I guess I could do that. He said, well, I'm going to give you some projects here. We've got some engineers here that have spent thousands of hours and they can't make it work or can't perfect it. I said, okay. So he says, well, here's a scotch tape dispenser we make, you know, refer to scotch tape with 3M. He says, they got lead weights in here so that when you go to pull the thing across, you know, it don't slide across the desk. And he says, we got so much money in this, why, why do we have to put lead in here and suction cups on it? Find a better way to, to cut costs on this. So he, I says, well, okay, he gave me a half a dozen. He says, go home and see what you can do. Well, I knew what I was going to do before he left the office. <laughs> and so, but I waited two weeks so I could be able to run up the bill. <laughs> so I come back with these, you know, and he's putting it on his desk like that, and he pulls the tape off. <laughs> Works. What'd you do? I says, here. What is that? A sand. I filled it up with sand. I said, how would you come up with that idea? I said, well, look down there. There's a big pile of sand, just 13th floor. I said, I got the idea of putting sand in. I was here to begin with. I went home and made some models. Well, today, all the Scott Scotch dispensers like this all have sand in them. Another project I did over here, post-its. OK. Well, post-its, one of their employees there, Mr. Fry, he used to like to go around and put notes on the people's desk or what have you, happy birthday, Sandy, or what have you. And so he said, you know, if we could put glue on these things, so all you got to do is just, you know, go up something like this or go on a uh, you know, wallpaper or what have you like that, and it's going to stick. That's a good idea. We don't have to use scotch tape then. This will be, you know, the glue will be part of the, of the, of the paper. Well, they spent seven years trying to come up with a glue that would not harden. It had to be a glue that would never, you know how glues are after a period of time, they, they dry and then, you know, you can't get it off. So they had to come with a glue that if you put it on fabric or wallpaper, you go to take it off, it's not going to take the wallpaper with it. So he says, figure out a glue that don't harden. Okay. But it took me two weeks. It took me one day, but I had you know run up the bill again. <laughs> so I came up with a glue for them that did it never harm. This product is 15% of 3M's gross business. And the thing is, what, you know, I can't talk about what's in it, but this is the trade secret of 3M. This is why you go out there to Alphys Max or anybody, there's no competition, or they, they do have a private label one, because nobody has been able to figure out how this glue works. It's done in a special room at 3M where there's only a few people that do the mixing and then it goes out in the barrels where it goes to the production table where they actually put the glue on. But this has been around for how many years now and nobody's ever been able to figure out how this glue works. Wow. I do, but I can't talk about it. <laughs> so that's, I'm getting into some of the things that I've done. This is a wheat eater here. This is the original prototype that you saw and that and some of the things I've done, like here's, here's, the, here's the, a wrench that you saw, you talked about. This wrench I developed a number of years ago, back in the late 90s, and went in production on this wrench. And I had, my biggest account I had was Napa Store, 6,800 of them. But I was running like 90 to 120 days behind on orders. So Napa came to me and he said, Bob, you've got to do something. We can't tolerate this 90, 120 day uh, 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 and then not having product. So I said, well, then I'm going to go out and find a big company that can make and fund this that, so I can take care of you. So I went out and found a company known as in Minneapolis here, Minnetonka, called 
Headers Worldwide. You ever hear of John, uh, uh, Tom yeah. Headers? So I licensed the company. And, and what my agreement was is that I would stay there for one year and get the product going and up and running there. And at the end of, at the end of one year, I sold out the product to them for $20 million. Now I was gonna take it on a five year payoff. So basically what it was is that at the end of one year, two weeks before I was gonna start getting my payments, the feds come in and lock the place up because he was running a Ponzi scheme. Oh, no. So this got tied up until two, oh, about two years ago. I couldn't do anything. I, I, I couldn't sell it I couldn't because this was all tied up in the court. So then finally here, about two years ago, I got the product back. But the thing was that I owned all the tooling and everything. I had a full line of product, not just wrenches, but sockets and everything else. All the tooling was, was I had made and and it was over, we made this product in Taiwan. So because of the bank, I lost all the tooling and everything else, which is millions of dollars worth. And then now I'm back in the business here, and I've got a few investors right in, and then what we've done is gone out, I did, one thing I did, I licensed a company known as Channel Lock Ally. And this is the low end wrench. This is like goes to your box stores like Menards or, or, uh, or Home Depot and some of those others. And so I get a, I, I sell them, I have the product in there, and here's the wrench, and then you got it with all the sockets, and I get so much on every one sold. Uh, we first now went into here to uh, Sam's Club, we put 54,000 in, sold out in two and a half weeks. Now we're building for Tractor Supply, which has 1,600 stores, and that's right now, we be about a quarter of a million of these that are going into Tractor Supply, and from there we're going to Advance Auto, it's 13,000 stores, and so forth and so on. Then. I've got this one right here. This is the what we call is the titanium. This is this is a cheaper one. This is the high end for like the professional mechanic, like you see with stamp on or what have you. And this is a this product here. I have a patent on is is impregnated gold handle, and the and the bore inside is impregnated, so it strengthens the wrench by up to 150 to 180 percent over ANSI. And and you see the color gold here. Well, what happened was is that I told people, I said, I'm, I applied for a patent on a on gold handle on a wrench. You never get it. You can't get a patent. A, a registration on the color gold for a, for a handle? Well, <laughs> this is the patent that was granted this last July. It's worth a fortune because now the fact is that the I've got product identity. So the thing is that these are just some of the products that I've had. Uh, the, all your uh, your pressure washer, your high pressure pressure washers, you know, like you have at home, you know, plug in and whatever. That's my invention, it's the pump. We sold out at the Delavan. Uh, Mr. Koff, 8 track tape player. I did that for Bill Lear, and I got paid $10,000 on that. String trimmer, I did that for, for Toro. The uh, parts cleaner was uh, Goodall Corporation, and and then and the store clo and the door closer there was for Hartzell Corporation. So these are just some of the products that that I've had, and uh, and and uh, like I said before, or we said in the, in the news articles that I've licensed out 47 products to companies. All 47 are still on the market today, except some are doing better than others. I've never licensed out or come up with a product that I've gone out and said, hey, look. You'll make money with it, and it hasn't. So let's see. How do I go to the next one? Uh, the left or right button there. Oh, okay. Okay. What we have here is another company I'm just reformulating right now, and that one of the products is is a decal. It's got special material that you put on your phone, and what it'll do is when you plug your phone into to charge the battery, we can get up. We can charge up to 50 percent faster. Another thing too, it'll hold the charge in the battery. You want to just mention what you, I got one guy in testimonial. Yeah. Got one on here, yeah, because of the Apple updates that came in and drained the battery, it was draining, and I didn't understand why it was draining so fast, like within an hour or two, the whole thing was gone. Somebody explained why Apple ended up going to court um, because of a class action lawsuit, uh, they coerced us. Well, I happen to get one of those stickers. That I call it a sticker. The girls ask, what's in that sticker? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> because actually, it's like I have a new battery. <laughs> That's how well it works. 
Yeah, we've had, what we've done right now, we've put quite a few of these out that we've manufactured prototypes in various individuals like yourself to get the feedback. And so one of the things that we that we, we found, you know, we get up, so when you plug your phone in, you can get up, to, it'll charge up to 50% faster. Uh, also, because of, uh, sometimes you get out in an area where you're not getting a good signal by just pointing your phone out here because we capture the, 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 the signal from the tower better so that you get in an area where you're not getting good reception, will increase the, or the uh, antenna strength so that you get a better signal so you, you don't, the, the, the phone won't just stop on you, you know, and that. So that's that's one of the problems. We'll get into that a little better here. Uh, uh, we also alkaline battery. I'm gonna get into that, and and uh, and the magnetic battery uh, charger, and then also the fuel cell. I'll get that. So uh, again, back here again is the is the ch ch charge booster. Uh, what we're doing right now, we have a company that's set up right now locally, and they have funded about fifty thousand dollars worth of. Uh, tooling and everything else to run this decal on their machine. The machine's about 40 feet long. It's about a million dollar machine. The machine now is set up with the tooling and everything. We can run 125,000 of these in an eight hour period or over 300,000 in a day. And so the thing is that we've got right now, because they're in their, their label company, they go for Skippy and, and Best Buy and all those, they're going after their clients right now. As an example, we're negotiating with like Batteries Plus, uh, uh, Target, uh, uh, and Best Buy, and many of these others right now. Uh, and we expect that, uh, well, the, the market is huge. And uh, the thing is, is that you can see what the market is. Verizon has 150 million customers. AT&T 141. You can imagine if every one of those customers bought one of these ch charge boosters from AT&T and that. 62% uh, of everybody in the country has a cell phone. The market is, this is the biggest product I've ever, ever come up with because you can see the need and the distribution and the amount of people that can buy it. You look at, when you go into a business and develop a product, is there a market for it? Is it priced right? Can you make them fast enough? That's why I have a company right now that's invested about 50 grand in the tooling and set up some that because they say they test the product and saw that it works. And so, and they're willing to put in more equipment as we get more orders. But we're going to be starting this coming uh, week writing a small production room because we have to get several out to like to Best Buy and Fabrics Plus and Target, some of those, they want to get a, a sample of the product so they can do further testing on it and give us, and, and so we expect that. We'll probably be getting a, we'll go after them probably by next month or two and get a big order out of them. And the thing is that you can see uh, about the, the features of it and, and so forth and so on. And the materials in here are non-toxic. There's not anything in there that's going to cause any problems. Uh, what we're saying here, we can do 125,000 in a day. And uh, we have a company right now, I mentioned that's, that's uh, doing our, our, our production for us right now. And so what we're doing there is that we're, we're licensed them to run every, every one they make, is a, they give me $3. Their production right now, they can do 125,000 in eight hour period, that's over 300,000 in a day. So 300,000 a day times $3, that's a million dollars a day royalty to me and a couple of my investors that we're working with. So the market is just tremendous. Uh, then along this company also, I said they're, they, they're going after and taking the sales on certain markets that they, they're already into and selling. Then we'll be going after other cell phone carriers such as uh, uh, a Verizon and the others or ad specialty people and license them the same as I licensed this first company here that we're licensing for $3. So, but we'll go global for all over the world this way. 
And right now we're right now we're looking at you know, raising another five or five hundred thousand dollars to promote this and, and go global with it. Um, then also we have right here is the battery. Everybody's familiar with uh, uh, your cell phone batteries and alkaline batteries. Alkaline batteries only got a certain shelf life, maybe three, four, five years or so forth and so on, and they're toxic. Your landfills today are just loaded with toxic batteries. What do you do with them? You can't recycle them, don't pay to recycle them, and so forth and so on. What we're seeing right now, recycling uh, 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 alkaline batteries in 2015 it was 4%, while well, we're talking about 40% by 2025, but who's going to do that? So well, I've come up with a battery right now that is, uses the replacement of this, and the chemicals in here is non-toxic, and we have about 20 percent tests are showing a 20 percent more output, and the cost of doing so is about no more than what an alkaline battery would be, but it, it'll be friendly to the environment, no toxic materials in it, and and. Uh, and it'll have more output and have a longer shelf life. 